next SCP is nicknamed Inner Sanctum. SCP-1348 is a modified cave complex located 81 kilometers from El Tabath, Syria, in the Jabal al Daruz Mountains. Upon initial discovery by IAEA monitors on March 6, 2006, the complex was believed to house a Syrian reactor. Subsequent Israeli airstrikes on the site resulted in the discovery of three unknown chambers. Per intergovernmental con compact with the Israeli and Syrian governments, Foundation agents responded containing SCP-1348-1, 2, and 3, constructing the Site-87 containment unit. SCP-1348-1-E is an anomalous humanoid originally observed for swearing the original practice now this designated as SCP-1348-2 inside the SCP-1348 uh, ritual complex. On redacted, three weeks after initial containment, the subject entered status epilepticus and died. During containment, the subject were Produce three utter utterances in the unknown southern Semitic language, but otherwise made no attempts to communicate with Foundation staff. Food, water, and bedding were declined. Intravenous nutrition provided impossible. Uh, oh, intravenous nutrition proved impossible. Subject otherwise in exhibited no anomalous behavior for autopsy result. Uh, but, SCP-1348-2 is a ritual practice of unknown provenance. Spoken portions of SCP-1348-2 are performed in an unknown Southern Semitic language when adequately performed by individuals meeting un unclear ritual criteria. SCP-1348-02 uh, prevents full retraction of the veil surrounding SCP-1348-03, an obligatory Precursor event in scenarios XK734, XK918, and XK337. At present, details of the religious faith underlying SCP 1348 2, ritual criteria necessary for adequate participation in SCP 1348 2, and a casual mechanism connecting SCP 1348 2. That the retraction of the veil are speculative or unknown. When performed by appropriate slow celebrants, adequate performances of SP 1348 2 are romantically virulent, inducing suggestibility, religious mania, and desire to perform the ritual practice in 38% of exposures. Repeated exposure results in virtually themed obsessive compulsion. The minute the medic transmission rate of SCP-1348-2 appears to increase as successful revisions approach the ide ideal state for unknown reasons. Members of haplotype CMH-6 appear to be immune to the adverse effects of this mimetic transference, while present transcripts and recordings of SCP-1348-2 are not believed to be virulent. Existing containment guidelines require certified foundation linguistics to minimize active exposure to full ritual recordings. SCP-1348-3 is a central chamber of the SCP-1348 complex. Due to high neutron flux, the chamber was originally believed to be a source site for high-grade radioactive waste or an unshielded reactor core. Initial investigation of the chamber by remote drone or field and an elaborate rectangular chamber decorated in the proto semitic style. Repeated motifs inclu include rams, serpents, slaughtered bulls, wounded island uh, lions, hawks, and depictions of ritual practices similar to SCP-1348-2. In the center of the room is a raised platform with a 9-meter radius of, uh, surrounded by a cylindrical sheath constructed of barium bronze. At dawn, noon, and dusk, the sheaf retracts, causing neuron flux inside SB-1348-3 to increase to lethal levels. 
performance of SB 1348-2 appears to provide celebrants with substantial protection against radiation poisoning and results in complete closure of the outer sheath. Attempts to, to view the area within the sheath uh, except the celebrants during performances of SCP-1348-2 have been unsuccessful. Celebrants, including Foundation staff, are unable or unwilling to disclose the inner region's contents for... Oh, yeah. That's it. I have... I did not retain any information about this SCP. <laughs> My brain just kind of shut off for no good reason. I apologize. It's a dangerous religion. It's, it's a mimetic religion, so Christian Christianity. Christianity. <laughs> That's my favorite religion. Christianity. <laughs> Said by the one Christian in the room. Christianity. <laughs> Christ hey, hey, Christ if there's anyone that knows the most on how to shit on like Christianity, it's going to be the Christian. I don't think that tracks, but okay. Hey, there are some Christians that are self-aware. Well, yeah, but... Anyway. Hell. Um... If you want more information, there's an incident that only the O5 can see. Wait, we're in the O5 now? Apparently. I, I mean, I stole this. Because I'm Serpent's hand. I stole it. Damn. Got him. Hurry. The, um, oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, I was gonna say, if it's just that, like, if it's just that this religion makes people come to it in this specific area, or is it that... Well, there's also uh, this, uh, at, at dusk, noon, and midnight, I think it said, uh, mm -hmm. The dash three instance uh, shoots out heavy re radioactive uh, waves, but anyone affected by the religion does not get harmed by it. Yeah, I I remember that bit. So then, I guess my first thought is okay. So it shoots out radioactive waves. Are these? Uh, is, is this basically? just going to constantly irradiate like at, like what I'm thinking is how is this radiation affecting the surrounding environment and how would it affect the world right. also should we read the O5 document because they do have a tendency to hide things that's fair yeah go ahead all right background unredacted three days after his interview with zero Dash nine one four two and five days after the death of dire director redacted, site director Khan compiled a new instance of SCP thirteen forty eight dash o two and entered the inner containment area. After performing external portions of SCP thirteen forty eight dash o two, Doctor Khan entered the central region of SCP thirteen forty eight o three. In accordance with Foundation protocol for investigating security breaches by senior staff, Foundation internal security personnel sequestered all electrical devices, paper files, and personal effects related to prior or present assignments by Site-93 personnel. After detailed forensic re review, internal security's preliminary conclusion was that Dr. Khan motivated all personal distress in the aftermath of the death of the rector redacted. Spontaneously and unilaterally decided to deviate from the containment protocol and enter the central region. On redacted, the following letter was returned unopened to Dr. Khan's primary residence in Haifa, Israel. Judith, it is strangely simple to be writing the last letter I will ever send. As long as I can remember, the truth has had consequences, so I have withheld as much as I could. But now the consequences are so very imminent. I will be departing beyond their reach. I have a confession. When you were ten, I told you that I was 
a linguist from for the Institute. When you were very young, three perhaps, this was true. By the time you were old enough to ask, I was wise enough to lie, and I had other duties. Before you retreated into the Torah, when you were still rebellious, you once told me that I loved my country more than I loved you. Why did I have to be a spy and not your father? I could not answer because I could and I not tell you that you were wrong. I served the world, not Israel. I served out, their, out of fear, not love. Before the Shoah, your grandfather was a typesetter in Danzig. The Germans burned his presses and took him to Monowitz, and he worked in the printer's shop. After the Americans came, he went to Israel and he fought at Jaffa, and after the war, he came to Barkai, and then I was born. These were the great and terrible events in his life, and I only met him after they had passed. Because I only saw the outlines of, of the events which had shaped him. I could not understand why he was such a hard man. Eventually, I gave up. I came to understand that I could never understand. I could only cast my forgiveness into the dark, not knowing what it was that I was forgiving. When you were 16, Eliezer told me that he wanted to marry you and study the Torah at Bene Brock. I screamed at him that there was nothing in the Torah and that he was a fool. I told you that if you married him, I would never speak to you again. I knew then and that if, if there was a God, he was vast and terrible and blind. You could not know how I knew this, but I was wrong, Judith. What does the Torah tell us? The name once moved upon the water, that he broke bread with Abraham, that he wrestled with Jacob and broke his thigh, that he bruised Moses and the clay beside the Jordan. But now the temple is a ruin, and the people of Moses are scattered. And we have lost even the name for so long. I have stood on the edge of the chasm which separates us, demanding that he explain. When you marry an Eliezer and you covered your hair, I thought you were abandoning me. But you're seeking after the name which I had abandoned, unafraid to cast your forgiveness into the depths of the mystery. If you're unafraid, even as a child, why have I hesitated for so long? It is late. I am tired. Tomorrow I will anoint myself with oil. I will bathe in the, in the font and I will seek his terrible name. When the sun rises, I will stand before my broken father, and the fathers who were broken before him. As someday you will stand before me, as someday you will stand before him, I will be held to account for my absence. I will hold the name to, to account for his, and I will forgive him. I love you. I love you, Father. In the light of this new information on Redacted, the Incident Review Board altered its conclusion and recommendation. Prior to entry, Dr. Khan was suffering from religious mania brought on by exposure to SB 1348-02. As a result, the Foundation now concludes that haplotype CMH-6 does not provide effective protection to ritual-associated mimetic effects. Conclusion. Per 05-07, C. Dash 1348-B containment procedures are suspended. Remaining C-1348-B personnel are to be treated with amnestics and quarantine until verbally cleared of all memories related to SCP-1348-02. Upon retraction to, of the veil, C-1348-A is immediately execute protocol 228-Malaka. That's the O5 thing. What they didn't want everyone to know. What they didn't want everyone to know is that literally anyone can be affected by it. Yep. That's There's horrifying. no protection. That is horrifying. So it's actually more dangerous than what it was originally written. Okay, but I guess my... Okay, so does this, 
so this this mimetic religion then lead to people uh doing an auto haunt himself consistent I mean, I mean they eventually die because the last person they did basically didn't want to eat drink or go to bed they'll eventually drop dead okay and how and how does the religion spread it just spreads like no as long religion. as you like get taught about it as long as you're taught it hmm. Hmm. so basically uh christianity and how that works <laughs> it's pretty much It pretty much is the definition of a death cult. Yeah. yeah. And it's a death cult that spreads mimetically. The question is, how far does that... So, like, if it's going to do this, if it's going to, like, kill a significant number of people, those people have to spread uh, as 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 we high priests of the telly oil it would say spread the good word yeah like oh okay. like smile dog yeah so um with the scp foundation's capability to suppress uh this sort of thing mm-hmm. uh it's i i i would this is a I difficult leave... scp <laughs> yeah, I would move on city. Yeah. Certain groups to city because like I can imagine like smaller group like smaller, less noticed populations of people just entirely getting infected by this. Mm -hmm. But like like the foundation, generally speaking, is pretty dang on the money when it mm -hmm. comes to uh fucking information suppression. Oh yeah. So, like, at its worst possible scenario, it would be end of humanity scenario. But I think that it's of a type of SCP that's particularly suited 